Revolution Golfers, Martin Chuck here, and welcome to the studio at the Raven Golf Club in Phoenix. Well, you can see I've got two really important people in my life right here. I've got Jackson Chuck and my coaching mentor, George Knutson. And this is Father's Day week, or Father's Day two weeks here at Revolution Golf. And this is a meaningful tip. George, when I was a young man, taught me how to control the golf ball on side hit lies. So let me take you outside and show you how to do that with a little Martin Chuck twist. Let's get started. Revolution Golfers, so here I am in a situation that you face all the time. Let me show you how I was taught by George Newton to deal with it, and I'll throw in a couple of little twists that I normally do. So this is a situation where the ball's below my feet. If I set up to the golf ball and aim parallel to where the target line is, let me show you the situation that happens. I've got my fancy little aiming device here, that magnet that just clicks on the face. And so if I stand in here, it's pretty easy to see. If I try to set up absolutely parallel to my target line, that extension highlighted by that orange ball is pointing well to the left. So if you sit up and make a normal swing aiming at your target line, what's going to happen? Well, the ball is going to start to the left and it's going to curve further to the left. Let me explain. So I've got my big golf ball here that we use at the academy. And when you hit a golf shot and the golf club it hits the ball below the equator, you get a backswing, you get a backspin situation. That's what we want because that backspin is what elevates the golf ball. Now, excessive backspin on a drive, you don't want that. But with iron shots, you want crisp contact with the face of the club below the equator of the ball, puts on backspin. Well, in this situation, you could see that when I was standing with my feet below the ball, everything's tilted. The grooves on the golf club, another little handy device to explain things, the grooves on the golf club are not parallel to the horizon in the distance. Everything is tilted. When things are tilted, the club's going to come in contact with the ball, and the ball's going to have its backspin, but that backspin is in a tilted situation. And think of it like an aircraft. If an aircraft's flying along and it wants to make a left-hand turn, it banks, and you get that same kind of banking situation. Well, that ball being forced into the air, that pressure and lift create that draw effect. So let's figure out how we're going to offset that condition of being in this tilted impact relationship to something that's functional for the shot. Now, if I take my 8-iron, and I've got my handy-dandy little aiming device on here, think about this, Revolution Golfers. I've got to make an adjustment. Well, let me show you what the, the simplest thing to do is just to aim everything to the right so that you can get that yellow ball or the direction of loft actually aiming at your target. So this is a situation where I feel like I'm aiming probably 20 degrees to the right in order to get that ball above that target line for the contact to make sense for the ball to fly reasonably straight. Now most tour players don't do that. Most tour players do a little bit of a blending of the two. Standard ball location on a parallel aim would produce a ball that starts and wants to hook to the left. So they do a little bit of two things. A little bit of right aim bias and then they move the golf ball a little bit back in their stance. So if I hit the golf ball farther back in my stance, that projects the ball out to the right anyway. So the two little things creeping together, and this is what Mr. Newton taught us little kids, was to, take, to set up, aim the face, play the ball fractionally back in our stance, which helps start it more to the right in this situation, and then from there, add a subtle bit of rightward aim and you're ready to go to hit shots, that have a lovely start line to the pin. I don't think I can do much better than that. So that had a really nice start line. So simple combination. The ball moves back a fraction and a fraction of rightward aim. And you'll have those shots when the ball's above your feet starting on line when you want to. Now you're going to say, well, Martin, what happens when the ball's below your feet? So let's look at this a different way. When the ball's below your feet, the golf club behaves differently. If I was hitting a shot back toward the camera, think of it this way. I can take up some of the slope. I can get the grooves of the golf club pretty close to parallel to the horizon just by my adjustment in my legs my body. So you don't have to aim as much well, for the right-handed golfer to the left as you would for the right-handed golfer with the ball above the feet. So some of this slope can be taken up. Some of the some of this relationship of getting the handle, you never play the handle and get the grooves even with the 
ground here because it wouldn't make any sense. But you can, certainly when the ball's in the rough like this, get the grooves kind of parallel to the horizon, make up some of that difference by getting a little bit more flex in your legs, and you have to aim a fraction to the left to target, but not as much, not as many subtle offsets as when you have the ball above your feet. So, Revolution Golfers, I hope that wasn't information overload. I hope it was something that can help you better manage these hillside conditions on the golf course. Please leave your questions, post them down below. I'll get to as many as I can. Thanks for watching.